If you're familiar with my videos, you know I'm constantly pushing the importance of including diet breaks into your cutting phases. And this is because they not only have the mental benefit of being able to enjoy some more food for a while, but they also have the benefit of keeping hormones and metabolism in a better place. And they can possibly be a huge part of any long-term success you're after because you're less likely to get stuck. And if for no other reason, they can make it easier to stick to the plan. So far, however, we don't have a lot of research that looks at diet breaks and the one that is typically looked at is the Matador study, which was a study where they took groups who either did 16 weeks of continuous dieting or they did 16 weeks of dieting, but it was with two weeks of dieting followed by two weeks of maintenance followed by two weeks of dieting and they repeated that pattern until 16 weeks of dieting was done. So that was 30 weeks in total. And what that study found was the group that did diet breaks saw 47% better fat loss as well as better muscle retention, less reductions in resting metabolic rate. And perhaps the most overlooked thing is they saw less weight regain post diet as well. Now, whether this was because the diet break group was in a better spot hormonally and metabolically, or perhaps maybe there was some mental component here the group that did 16 straight weeks of dieting felt more restricted so after the diet they're more likely to overdo it we don't really know i would imagine it's some sort of combo and that's kind of the point I'm always trying to make. We can get caught up in going, well, I don't want this diet to take any longer than it needs to. I don't want to delay my results, but we have to be careful about not getting too short-sighted because one, it doesn't do you much good to go faster if you just gain the weight back post-diet. And two, I think a lot of people aren't able to reach their final goals because they never take breaks and they run their body into the ground. So whether it's for mental or physiological reasons, almost doesn't matter as long as it helps you reach your goal. Anyway, there's a new study that came out recently covering diet breaks. Lane Norton actually just did a video about this not too long ago, and I wanted to kind of give my take on things. Now, this study was done in athletes, which the other study was done in obese and overweight individuals, and this study was also only 12 weeks of dieting versus the 16 weeks, and they did three weeks of dieting followed by one week of diet break and repeated that four times, so it was a 15 week in total for the diet break group, whereas the other one was 30 total weeks for 16 weeks of dieting. Anyway, this study found there was no significant difference between the two groups in fat loss, lean body mass retention, or resting metabolic rate, which of course led plenty of people who didn't necessarily agree with diet breaks to begin with, go to the extreme like people do and say, see, look, diet breaks are pointless. This study proves it. Case closed. Okay, hold on. Let's look at this a little bit closer. First, even if this study proved that your metabolism doesn't get a benefit from diet breaks, which I don't think it does, but let's just say for the sake of argument that it does. As I always mention, we've got to factor in other things like the mental side of things and the group that did the diet breaks saw less reported hunger and there were less dropout cases as well. And considering how many people lose weight only to gain it back, these things are not unimportant. Anyway, let's cover some of the potential reasons why I think there could be some differences between these studies and why there were such significantly different results. The first is the group that did the two on two off approach was overweight and obese individuals, whereas the group that did the three on one off approach were athletes. So perhaps there's some sort of difference between these types of people and how they respond to diet breaks. There's also the difference in the amount of time dieting and diet breaks, whereas the first study had two weeks of dieting with two weeks of diet break versus three weeks of dieting and just one week of diet break. So perhaps it requires more time out of a deficit to get those hormonal and metabolic benefits. And they saw that in the two on two off approach, or maybe it's the three weeks of dieting versus just two, the two weeks of diet break versus just one, maybe some sort of combination factor. I feel like it's entirely possible more time creates more adaptations, whether in a deficit or out of a deficit. The other factor to consider is the total time, right? One group had 16 weeks of dieting, the other group had 12 weeks of dieting. Maybe there's a difference there. There's a lot of things to consider, not the least of any one study never proves anything. All of it is just the data and we have to look at these things and search for ways to make practical applications. And as more and more data emerges, our approaches may change slightly. Plus, while we never want to rely just on things like anecdote, we also don't just want to rely on science. 
I mean, you could add to the mess here and look at this study that was done recently at USF where they looked at one group that did a 25% calorie reduction every single day and the other group did a 35% reduction during the week, but maintenance on the weekends. And while it showed fat loss was the same between the two groups, the group that had the maintenance calories on the weekends actually retained more lean body mass and saw less reduction in the resting metabolic rate. So why would one study that looked at an entire week of being in maintenance not show a difference in resting the metabolic rate, while the other only did two days and did. Honestly, who knows? Maybe it had something to do with how big the deficit was. There could be a lot of different factors at play. And either way, it's just a little more evidence that not eating in a calorie deficit every single day may have some benefits. Anyway, anecdotally, working with a lot of clients over time, I have just noticed that people tend to respond better when they come back to their cut after taking a two week diet break versus just one. And this is why I try to get two week diet breaks as much as possible out of people because I've just found it to be so helpful. And I can't tell you how many times somebody's DM'd me on Instagram and asked me, hey, I've been stuck for months and I can't seem to lose weight anymore. I'll ask them, when was the last time you took a diet break? And they say, I've never taken one. And I'll just say, take a two week diet break, come back, try again, let me know how it goes. And a lot of the time they come back and go, wow, I can't believe it. I'm actually seeing fat loss again. Does this all prove that two weeks is the magic protocol here? Of course not, but it's definitely worth taking into consideration. And no matter what science says, if I find something that tends to work consistently, I'm gonna keep working with that until I find something that works better. Now, as far as the actual two week on, two week off approach, this is something I rarely use, especially if somebody has a lot of weight to lose. I mean, it can extend the cut for a long period of time. For some people, it's great, they love it. They feel like they can handle two weeks of dieting because they know that two weeks of break is coming. And in a way, they almost kind of never feel like they're dieting because they're constantly getting those breaks. But for a lot of people, it's just not something they would like. As mentioned, I do like to do two week diet breaks, but it's gonna be spread out more either when they get stuck or usually between about four to eight weeks, even if things are going well, I typically like to take a diet break just because I notice that it keeps people in a better spot and keeps the process working better for longer. That being said, with the two week on, two week off approach, this is something I will occasionally use in people who have bigger hormonal conditions or are just someone who is typically really stubborn when it comes to fat loss. I've found in those cases, this two week on, two week off approach can sometimes work pretty well. And I think probably it just helps keep their body from adapting faster and keeps the process working. All that being said, you have to find what works best for you and what you prefer and how your body responds. Everyone's a bit different. There's no such thing as a one size fits all approach. For instance, I find most people take a diet break, they come back from their break and hunger is way better, they feel better and they're ready to get after it. However, in some cases, people actually end up feeling much more hungry by starting a diet break, even if they weren't that hungry before taking the break. So in one case, it may be a good idea to keep taking breaks even if you don't feel like you necessarily need it. In the other case, where it can almost make things worse, you're probably still gonna wanna take some diet breaks occasionally, but you're better off taking them only when your body really needs it, when your body's starting to stall out and get pretty run down versus trying to kind of get ahead of it. And as always, we can't ignore the mental benefits here. Even if diet breaks do absolutely nothing for your hormones, nothing for your metabolism, if they help you stick to the plan, if they help you feel better, if they help you feel less hungry, if they help give you more energy and perform better, all these different things, well, then it's still well worth it. So anyway, what do you think? Do you use diet breaks? Have you found them to be helpful? I'd like to hear your experiences with them. And by the way, if you'd like to know how I recommend going through a cutting phase from adjusting your macros, exactly how to include diet breaks and how to adjust the macros for that, and really everything you need to know to get through your cutting phase, make sure you check out this top video next. Otherwise, I think you'll like this bottom one instead. And I'll see you in one of those other videos.